are all going. You ready? Yeah. Ooh, welcome back to our podcast. Welcome to our podcast. We're fucking back and we're different and we're more tan and where we were relaxed. Man, if you were to catch us <laughs> in the first 45 ish minutes of being back, you would have caught the most relaxed two people. I think that the diminishing returns on the relaxation happens in the the morning you're going to go away. As soon as there's like any kind of obligation, I think the most relaxed you could possibly be on vacation is the um maybe the night before you have to start leaving or that morning mm-hmm. the morning before the night before you start leaving yeah the morning before you start leaving yeah because what happens the day of is the last day of your vacation really doesn't belong to you does it no that belongs to chance yeah and uh, as soon as you have to start thinking about either packing or returning a rental car or what's going on at the airport or the weather or whether or not an entire island has power, that's when it starts. The, and then you have to go on a plane. Right. And we had to go on a plane for six hours. And there is no relaxation. You can sleep, but that doesn't... Or try to. Those two things are... Um, not mutually exclusive, I guess. No. Or are mutually exclusive, depending on how that phrase works. I mean, I had, I, I was still relaxed. I mean, we. You did not look relaxed. You look like a lowercase s on the plane. Well, I mean, sleeping on a plane sucks, but thank you for letting me stretch out mm-hmm. and make you as uncomfortable as possible. And that's where it starts to take a dip for me if there was a like a scatter plot graph yeah but he did he let me sleep on him we're married it was very nice and i appreciate you for letting me do that and i'm here for you always and i know that you would do the same for me if i was able to relax on a plane but still not um super stressed out Mm -mm. just back into work mode so what we're gonna do on this podcast first of all Thank you for letting us take two weeks off. It was really appreciated. And we had maybe the best vacation of our lives. And we were very relaxed and nice. And um, vacation did the, it did the trick and saw some of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen in the world, aside from my wife. (laughs) Thank you. It was very brave of me to say, I think. Yeah. And then um, we missed you guys for two weeks. Yeah. But also not really, because I didn't miss doing any work for two weeks. Yeah. But now we're back, and we're happy to talk to you and maybe inject a little uh, joy into whatever kind of day you're having, even if you're already having a good one. Take yeah. some more. Here's here's a, a little more for your for your cup, yes. you know? Fill it up. Run it over. Yeah. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to recount our vacation so you could be alongside of us the and with us yes so you could be in us in our with our memories of our vacation but a huge shout out to lex and josh and kevin and leah Leia? for leah for um putting up an episode or a clip every every day while we've been gone yes um those are actually a lot of fun to rewatch. A yeah. lot of them. That's uh, nice. Yeah, uh, Scoopy Nice seems to be one of uh, the fan favorites. Yeah. Um, I had a client on Saturday come in, and he was like, "I saw clips of you and your husband's podcast." He was like, "Very funny." You guys have that ice cream podcast. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Very funny." He's like, "The Scoopy Nice was <laughs> is probably one of my all time favorite clips ever." <laughs> People are starting to get tattoos. People are starting to send pictures of their Scoop You Nice tattoos. Really? No. I was about <laughs> to say. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I 
this vacation was definitely necessary. Mm. And uh, it was beautiful, as you said. And we had a lot of fun. And we did see a lot of beautiful, beautiful things. But we also did a whole lot of nothing on the beach. Yeah. Which was fucking awesome. Doing nothing on the beach is great. Mm -hmm. And then I would go in the water. And I would do a little something in the water. And then I would come back out and do nothing again. Mm -hmm. I did feel like I was wet for a week. Yeah, which felt nice. Like a woman in a healthy relationship. (laughs) Um, We got there and we had the first time Hawaii experience, which is very nice. Everything is new. Mm -hmm. It's very special when you see, because uh, Hawaii is one of those places that you hear about all throughout your life and you're like this is the most um remote and beautiful place on the face of the planet and then you get there and everything is new and everything is nice Mm -hmm. and um it did not uh all my expectations were like met yeah yeah um so we got there we immediately kind of found a beach that was across from the airbnb that we were staying at Mm -hmm. and it was nice. The water is like pool water. And we immediately saw schools of fish beneath our feet. And a, a tortoise bumped into us at one point. And there were waves and the most beautiful sunset you'll ever see in your life. Really great food. Mm-hmm. There was a guy at the grocery store with shit all over his pants that I noticed. We went to um, a Costco right outside the airport and got... Uh, there were six of us. We got a ton of food that we barbecued all week. I say we. I mean, I ate it. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah. And that was fucking awesome. It was good company, good surroundings, Papa John's. Mm-hmm. There was one day early on into the trip, and feel free to interrupt me at any time, Yes. where we saw a cricket roach that i had never seen before it's interesting being in the one of the most remote parts of the planet because you you see living things that you've never seen before Mm -hmm. fun fact there's no snakes on hawaii Mm -hmm. can't make it can't make the trip but they breed their own species and one was but I can only assume was a cricket had sex with a roach that had sex with a tiger at one point. <laughs> and, uh, and we scooped that nice. Yeah. And then we put it back into the world. I don't know that that was a roach. I think that that was, I have no idea what that was, but it was creepy. And then at once I caught it, it was getting pissed off. It was, it was like rearing up. Yeah. Like a horse. And I was like, mm-mm, no, mm-mm. so I put it outside. I didn't kill it. No, we did the thing because we were so afraid of getting cursed Yeah. that um, we put a cup uh-huh. over it and we slid junk mail beneath it. Mm-hmm. And, um... Or not junk mail, laminated rules from the Airbnb. Yeah. And it was so big and it reared up in such a way where I was like, could this motherfucker sting me through the rules? Probably. And uh, and so then we we whisked it away. Whisked. We were also told to watch out for giant centipedes that bite you that hurt a lot. I didn't see any, but I I was told that they ruled the night by my friend Willie. Packs of them rule the night. Yeah. And to not move anything that looks like it's been there for a long time, which is everything on Hawaii. Yeah. And we were in Maui, Mm -hmm. and that was fucking awesome. Like I said, we kind of had this um, semi-private beach. We were staying in a apartment complex that was across from a resort so we would just go scoop their amenities basically yeah i mean we just kind of it was like no no uh no beach access no which we did not pay attention to if you have legs you got beach access yeah 
Yeah. And if there's openings, there's beach access. Yeah. So if I could hear a beach, I'm going to get to it. Yeah. But nobody bothered us. They let us just kind of walk through with all of our stuff and it was fine. Yeah. Well, they also know they're going to make money from you if you're there. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not causing a ruckus or bringing in outside food or alcohol. Mm Mm-hmm. Which we did. Which we did. We a hundred percent every day dragging coolers loudly mm-hmm. into a place where they were not allowed. Mm-hmm. But come say something. Yeah. It is incredible that we were in kind of like this cove where you know there's kind of jetties on either side, and there are waves that gather in the middle that gets pretty big, and the rip tides were were pretty big and vicious. But there's no lifeguard the entire time, Mm-mm. and I saw people thrashed around yeah especially like towards the end of the week yeah it got wild and that <laughs> blew my mind yeah because i grew up we grew up i grew up in in the northeast mm-hmm. and our beaches where i'm from have no waves and the water is cold and dark and there are rocks yeah under it mm-hmm. and there are lifeguards at all times mm-hmm. and here it was like you were in a shaken soda and there was no lifeguards and there were a bunch of like super little kids and babies Mm -hmm. and very drunk people. Mm -hmm. Zoya met a drunk woman in the open sea. Yep. And this bitch was on a, (laughs) a floaty, a floaty, like Like a pool pool. toy. Yeah. One of the ones where you lay completely out that has like a, like a cup holder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like one of the ones where you, you have no control no. over where you're going or Zero. where you're at. Yeah. You're just laying down mm-hmm. on top of the ocean. Right. On top of the angry, angry ocean. Especially that day. Yes. That was like the the first day of insanity. So this chick is like six, early 60s, late 50s. If not older, yeah. If not way older. Frail. Diane. 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 Drunk a lot. Wasted. Could you tell she was drunk when you met her in the water? Not at first. Functioning alcoholic. Functioning. So you and some more of our friends, Jackie, mm-hmm. were out there. You made friends. And then the the ocean got a little rough. It got a little rough. And there was a guy that was, he, all week long, he had like a like a, a ball that Water he would polo ball. throw for himself. And like he would get it and then keep throwing it and playing you know, in the ocean, whatever. You yes. know, he was having a blast. Surveying by himself. the situation. <clears throat> a couple times, like, hey, how are you? Everything's good, good, okay, great. So we meet Diane, and Diane is a chatty Diane. Sure. And. And she looks just like you'd imagine. Yeah, she's <laughs> she is Diane through and through. You might be sitting there thinking, does she have like a leopard print bathing suit on? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Is she blonde? Yeah. Mm, uh huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are the sunglasses are they big? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. she's Diane. Yeah. You know. Um, and does she have expensive jewelry on in the ocean? Uh hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. I yes. said we said already. Mm-hmm. Her name is Diane. Yeah. And she's on a pool floaty where she has no physical control mm-hmm. over the elements in the ocean. So yeah, she's wearing a couple necklaces. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like, you know, you guys should probably head back in. We hadn't realized how far back we had gotten pushed out into the the ocean. Yes. And I had turned that way down. I apologize. Did I fuck it up? I don't know that you fucked it up, but I also don't know that anyone can hear you. And I know that everybody wants to. Mm-hmm. So that's well, where we're at. Here I am. She is. So I ended up, so we started to go back and Diane is trying to like pot, paddle, you know, yeah, with her arms and she can't get up over her big ass Mac daddy Cadillac of, of a floaty. Yeah. So the guy with the water polo ball helps her to shore. Jackie and I are swimming with our, you know, our pool noodles that we brought into the ocean with us. Also an interesting choice for the ocean. It worked. It helped. It did work, but it is bare minimum. That's all you needed. You got, you got legs, you got feet, you can kick. Come on. Kick, 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 kick. Kick. Yeah. Kick. Dude, swimming instructions. (laughs) 
Go so ahead. we didn't feel like getting out of the water. So like we were, we had moved closer to shore and we just kind of were like floating around. Well, Diane needed to get out of the water. Mm-hmm. So I start to watch her and Jackie and I both look at each other and we're like, oh no. So we're trying to help Diane. Yeah. <laughs> Diane literally is getting thrashed. 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 Trounced. Now this is the second time I've watched Diane try to get out yeah. of this water. <laughs> Pool floaty, drink, everything is going all over the place. I grab the pool floaty. I let her go get thrashed for a little while. I throw her floaty out. Jack grabs her uh, grabs her drink that she brought into the ocean with her. Thank God. And she throws it out, whatever, and we try to grab Diane yeah. now. Diane you, is on her You ever play back. Pop Goes Perfection? The... the uh the board game pop goes perfection where the dice are in that thing in the middle where you, you press down mm-hmm. and then the dice flip mm-hmm. out for a second. That's what she looked like. That's exactly what she was. Yeah. So we tried to get her on her feet and tried to stabilize her. No. At one point she takes both Jackie and I out. So Jackie and I are definitely going to die because of Diane at this, at this point. That's Diane how, that's what happens. Is doing us dirty, dirty Diane. Yeah. Okay? You, you chose to save this woman yeah or attempt to and she is dragging you deeper into the angry yeah. angry sea so now morgan is standing there right? morgan is jackie's fiance. fiance and morgan's standing there and he's like i can't touch anything yeah he's because like, literally, t- her tits are out or they are everywhere gone so yeah. you can't as a man in 2022 <laughs> <laughs> attempt to save a dying woman if her tits are out because you don't know if yeah, you're gonna you get know, fucking right? <laughs> yet it up <laughs> so at one point i grab her from like under her arm right and i have her and she that's the new me too movement legs, if somebody is naked and drowning you can't touch them because then you'll be drowning too yes, yes. <laughs> so i grab her by her arm her feet just come out from under her and i grab her by her ankles <laughs> the safest now jackie is crying dying laughing <laughs> just yeah. we are hysterical at this point because we can't get fucking diane out diane's like oh my god i'm so embarrassed blah 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 so i have her by her ankles and the water is now like rushing back out into the sea right and it is just all going like up her nose in her face in her mouth like yeah and you're then holding her ankles point, kind of making sure that happens i had to like let her go because i was like i'm gonna kill this poor woman yeah you know and i'm crying laughing you got to let the ocean take your fingerprints off our ankles. It took us a, good, a solid like 15 minutes. And at that point, you had gotten up and you were just like overseeing yeah. what was happening. Yeah. I'm like, hmm, that doesn't seem good. <laughs> Do I? Don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was several times where she was almost out of the water. Mm-hmm. And she would get out and then stand in like a not all clear Mm -hmm. zone and then she would get swept out again and she wasn't making any effort to like come more forward Mm -hmm. so i was like is she like injured yeah and then she's definitely gonna weigh down two people i care about very much Mm -hmm. and i don't want that to happen so i go over keep in mind her husband sitting behind us Mm -hmm. did not move not once i probably didn't even look no um so i go over and everyone's like exhausted Mm -hmm. at this point because they've been popcorn kernels for Mm -hmm. the past however many minutes Mm -hmm. and we i was like move forward yeah keep coming this way yeah and they finally do and the first thing she says to me was we want to go to your show tomorrow (laughs) Which, thank you, but that's not when that happens. No. We're not making plans to hang out. No. And you almost killed my wife and my friend. Yes. But uh, she was very nice. And then she um, she comes to say goodbye to us later. Oh, man. I forgot about this. Yeah. Go ahead. So she comes back over at some point, and I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure when she had left even. And all of a sudden, she like taps me on my shoulder, and I'm sitting underneath our umbrella, 
and I look up and it's just bare tits. Bare titties. Bare tits. <laughs> out in my face. Diane had bare tits. Diane's bare Diane's tits. Bare tits. Diane's bare tits. <laughs> and of course, segment. she's like, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. But And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, I like look over at Jackie and you guys, and everybody's just like, <laughs> nobody knows what to say. Yeah. See you at the show, lady. Bring your tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Bye. your husband and your tits. Yeah. Dude, so... Um, mm. So mm-hmm. that was that. Not the first time Zoya saved somebody's life on vacation. And already you're thinking, man, I, I, you know, I know you guys got to go relax. You only went for a week. Hopefully you had some time to relax. We, we could did. tell you about relaxing time, yeah. but it's boring. We sat down and we did nothing. Yes. And no electronics were on Mm-mm. or I was just on my phone mm-hmm. and there was not, there was only waves and relaxing. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole relaxing story. Yeah. yeah doesn't necessarily make for a very compelling story no um zoya not only saved dirty diane (laughs) but she also saved a little russian um autistic kid i was about to call him an acoustic kid and that is not the right no i mean he could be acoustic he was technically acoustic that's how we heard him (laughs) yes so we were in our rooms it was early in the morning this is towards the tail end of our trip and we hear like a kid yelling in the courtyard Mm -hmm. now there are all these apartments and they're kind of facing each other and then there's the road is um at the mouth of the apartments and there's a gate that goes and um, this little kid was like screaming and mm-hmm. yelling and running and pulling on the gate. Right. But on both sides of the... So as soon as you pull out, there's like blind corners on either side of yeah, we the street that we were. Yeah, we were on a treacherous curve. Yeah. So, so at first I was like, okay, maybe he doesn't know how to open because there's a, like a, a gate, right? That slid open with, like a, a, button with a button, right? Right, and then, that he couldn't have jumped over or right, whatever. And he couldn't get that one open and that's what he was tugging on. And then there was like a pedestrian walking gate to right, the right. Which had no lock or anything. So I literally it. like, I was like, if he walks out, I'm like, this is not good. I couldn't see any parents. And I'm like talking to Mike and we're in, thank God, like our bedroom window faced the, the driveway, yes. you know? We're also naked at this point. I was. I was like putting clothes on as this was happening. Yeah. And it's like 5.45 in the morning, right? Like it couldn't, it, the sun literally had just peaked up over and it was just starting to get light. Yeah. So I'm like, if this kid goes to that door, I was like, we gotta, um, I'm going outside. Right. Because he's trying to play and he's pulling on the gate to right. try to get out and like probably run to the, where he thinks the beach is. Right. And he's pulling on this gate and he can't do it. And then he's just like making his way over to the gate that's very easy to open. Mm-hmm. So I literally just book it downstairs out the front door, down those steps. And I like run into the street because I I can see. So as I'm like running out of the gate, <laughs> I hear the dad and I can't talk at this moment. I have... I don't know if this is like mom fear or whatever, but it like whatever it was, it kicked in and I could barely talk or scream or anything. Yeah. You're scared for this kid. Yeah. Because we're on a very dangerous street. You really couldn't see anything coming around the corners and the locals drive so fast Mm -hmm. and the tourists don't know where they are anyway. Right. So it's only dangerous all over the place. Right. Plus this kid is like t-shirt, no pants. Yeah. Screaming running around obviously he had, like, like underwear on but like yeah he was just like yeah he did no i don't remember <laughs> i can't i was the, the everybody's fear. naked on this island yeah. at all times so it didn't matter he couldn't have been more than 10 years old yeah and i hear the dad like calling for him and i was like he's in the street like i was able to like voice that and as i'm like rounding the corner like he got he got up pretty far i mean and i hustled you know yeah and um and you guys are the same size and he was <laughs> arguably faster yeah and i was like and he's like at the at the top of the bend of the blind corner in the middle of the street and i was like hey buddy get out of the street hey buddy you know like and i'm trying to like get him out of the street yeah. but i don't i also know i can tell that this kid also has is autistic like and i don't want him. to upset him or right. touch him 
or freak him out, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm like, hey, hi, you know, like, you know, like just trying to like get him to like trust me yeah. a little bit. This lady seems nice and nervous. Yeah, right. Uh, this lady seems sweaty. I mean, I wonder what she even wants. At like even now, like thinking about it, like it just it, like like it makes me like anxious to think about it because it could have been bad so fast. Oh my god, yeah. So um the dad comes booking it and he's like get out of the street and i was like come on and i was able to finally like get him like over to the sidewalk thank god nothing happened yeah. but he was very russian <sighs> yeah was vlad like, i don't know how it happened yeah he's always oh, he cannot control himself yeah he was and like, he like i don't think he knew the english words yeah. for you know that that his his son had a yeah he was like he's special needs and i was yeah. like listen i was like i get it and he was like we have to watch him every second he's like i don't know he's like i turned around for a second he was like and he just walked out the front door and i was like listen i get it thank god no one's hurt everyone's happy healthy you know and i think i think that put him like the dad at ease and sure shit happens right mm-hmm. like it's just unfortunate thank god nothing happened while they were on vacation Dude. you know yeah so I'm like, I get it. I get it. And also lock the door a little bit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but he's uh, this child also is at the age where... He can unlock the door? Yeah, he can reach it and probably understands. Just because he's autistic doesn't mean he's stupid. I'm you not know saying what I mean? he's stupid. No, no, no. I'm just but saying like in general. I don't know like, general, at one age you like, start unlocking doors. Yeah. Probably like around four or five. Whoa. All right. Lifelong criminal unlocking doors at four or five. They used to send Zoya into safes, <laughs> bank safes in Albania. They used to slip her in. Imagine. But yeah, that was... At uh, what age did you learn how to unlock a door with a credit card? <laughs> <laughs> not going to answer that. Okay, whatever. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I'm just trying like, to figure out information. I was like six or seven. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Zoe saved two people's lives on vacation. And uh, and so that is, you know, the typical Zoe vacation. Um, and, you know, we, we did a very touristy thing. We went to a luau and we had a lot mm-hmm. of Hawaiian food. That was fun. The more I thought about the luau, the more I was like... That's maybe the widest thing we could have done mm-hmm. because it was at like a hotel. It was at mm-hmm. like a West End or something. It was very good and very entertaining, mm-hmm. but it felt like very like a high school pep rally type thing where you could tell like the people do it every night. They perform it every night, but they did a great job. Yeah. Right. And they put their all into it. But everyone around there is just very... You know, you kind of have, you ever go to a wedding for Mm -hmm. someone you don't know that well, Mm -hmm. like maybe a coworker, Mm -hmm. and you have no attachment to to anyone else there. That's kind of how it was. Yeah. So we went, we tried to get drunk and it didn't work because all the drinks are mostly sugar. And then we ate uh, poi and we left. Yeah. And, uh, And that was great. And then we started doing kind of more... I don't know. We we ventured out a lot. We went on this thing called the Road to Hana, mm-hmm. where you just drive up a mountain in a rainforest, mm-hmm. and there's this audio guided tour that you could put on, which was extremely helpful. Mm-hmm. And you could stop at all these different places in the rainforest and either get um, food or see waterfalls or swim in a waterfall mm-hmm. and or see like volcanic rock and fucking. Um, drink out of a coconut and and do all this stuff and it's very like it's a touristy thing but it's in a very local area Mm -hmm. so they're like definitely stay out of this area because you'll get beat up and stay out of that area and be nice over here (laughs) and uh and so that was really fucking cool i've never you know i ate coconut shrimp in a rainforest yeah that was fucking awesome there are these two um local vendors who are making um coconut shrimp and fish and chips dude you gotta i'm sorry like it's fucking me up bad okay go ahead um and it was great Mm -hmm. it was very great morgan drove the whole way Mm -hmm. and 
Sweet angel. Dude, crazy treacherous. Mm -hmm. Wrote a lot of one lane bridges Mm -hmm. and a lot of depending on the kindness of strangers to not kill you. Yeah. And it worked out. We're still here. Zoya swam in a waterfall. Mm Mm-hmm. It's very cool. I brought a camera, mm-hmm. so I I took pictures, yes. which are on Mike Fell Photography. There mm-hmm. are some on the Instagram, and uh, you could look at those. And I didn't get to swim. That's okay. I don't feel like I missed out, but I didn't get to. I swim I would have let you swim. I don't know why. Somebody I else could hold, hold the camera for a second. I would have. You didn't give it to me. Kind of a once in a okay. lifetime thing. All right. Anyway. Um, but that was super fucking fun. We had to go back because uh, Rich, one of the guys that we were on the trip with, had um, managed to get reservations to this place called Mama's Fish House, mm-hmm. which is a very famous um, place on Maui where it takes like six months sometimes to get a reservation. Mm-hmm. And we got one, and food was amazing. Mm -hmm. We went to a fish house. I had the best steak I've ever had in my life (laughs) because the turf part is important out of the surf turf. Yeah. Everybody else got something extravagant. We had Mai Tais. We had this mushroom soup Mm -hmm. that, I don't know. I feel like I came with my mouth. (laughs) And um, The last day that we were there, is there anything in particular that I'm missing? Uh, not that I can think of. I mean, uh, you know, like it was beautiful. The road to Hana was, it was beautiful. It takes fucking forever to do. So like if you're going to book something like that, it's all make sure thing. you have an extra day for just that. There's Don't also, book anything yeah. else. Don't. You know, the the app we downloaded was super, super helpful. The guy that was navigating it was, you know, really fun. And, great. you know, it was cute. Great voice. Um, Mama's was great. Um, yeah, I mean, aside so, from that, like. So every day was great. Yeah. We did great things every day. We where it was a very like easygoing group of people. Everyone got along and hung out and was excited to like, let's all relax now. Let's all do something. Yeah. It was just like perfectly orchestrated um, vacation. Mm-hmm. The last day. Oh, night before the last day. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, my friend, Willie Simon, who's a good friend who lives in LA now, but is originally from Hawaii, went back to see his family. So we had a couple days of overlap there. And mm-hmm. as we were going, he was coming. Shout out to Lewis uh, for helping us get uh, a hotel for the day. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, and we ended up having like a really good day. The guys ended up going golfing. Yes. And they uh, had a blast. Yeah. And I Jack- have a couple of strike true uh, episodes on uh tiktok and instagram and all that and those were all shot in hawaii we're doing three second one goes up today or has gone up today um and jackie and i just stayed poolside all day long yes and the morning was beautiful and sunshiny and then the afternoon was like just cloudy it rained we were all in the hot tub in the rain and just swimming around didn't care yeah i loved every second that it was like pouring and we did not fucking care there was another little kid trying to kill a bird with his bare hands Mm -hmm. all interesting things are happening all around you at all times Mm -hmm. (laughs) so willie tries to book us a last minute show at a bar Mm -hmm. on a golf course and we went and there's like maybe anywhere from 13 to 20 people there Mm -hmm. and two comedians go up Mm -hmm. and then they put another comedian in the middle Mm -hmm. who did an hour, did an hour in the middle of a show. And so I was supposed to go up and I leave in the middle. I'm like, I can't, this is a vacation. We have people here with us that are just like, everyone's in vacation mode. No one's like, let's sit through an hour of like, I'm working stuff out. Right, because we still. I don't want to. I didn't want to squash anyone's vacation right. mode, and also I was going out of my goddamn mind. Yeah, I was like, I'm three thousand miles away from Los Angeles, and I have to hear dating is hard in L.A. Yeah. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I left. 
Um, that was the literally the only thing. Oh no, no, I was gonna say. <laughs> Hold on a second. I was because... gonna say that was the only thing that was a little bit stressful on the whole trip, which is very funny, because another extremely stressful thing happened. But for some reason, I had no stress from it, and I can't believe that we left it out of the casual storytelling. Um, you know. <laughs> Go ahead. Going back to that night for of the show, we still had like an hour drive back. Oh so yeah, we it was drove, an hour to the bar. Yeah. It was an hour back. So and we now drove, we have to listen to an hour of <laughs> dating is hard in LA yeah, joke. No, forgot to say. Let's go back a couple days. Okay. Me and Zoya are floating in the water in the beach. Everything is perfect. I say I'm gonna go boogie boarding. Yeah. Why don't you hold my ring so I don't lose it in the ocean? <sighs> Zoya takes it, takes my ring. She's like, I got you, baby dog. Unties her bathing suit, ties the ring in with her bathing suit. Boom, secure. It's good. We're good to go. I should have just left it there the entire time. Should have just left it so there. So at some point, like I'm, I followed Mike to go boogie boyer of boys. Boogie boyer. Yeah. And the boys are having a fucking blast at this point. And I'm just watching, laughing at them. And I'm, you know, like riding the waves in and whatever i have sand full uh bathing suit bottom full of sand you know and i was like all right let me shake some of this out swim my way back and we're good to go dude there was one night when we discovered boogie bougier where (laughs) we did it until the sun went down Mm -hmm. and we were watching the sun go down this was that as we were doing it was that night anyway that's a couple hours later um oh I th- that's Mike. part of the story yeah, so yeah. we do that yeah we boogie board all like there are just kids around us mm-hmm. and then there's us yeah so when everyone rides the wave in and then everybody gets up there's the little kids height and then there's us towering over these like right little kids. so of course mike and and the boys are like having the most fun the more fun yeah. than anybody else and the, like we the, could see them like just like taking turns on the boogie boards one of the boogie boards broke they went back and grabbed the other one yeah it was the best there was this dude mark who was like in his 50s and he was trying to hang out with us and he was like a financial something and it was kind of like he had this vibe that he had never been allowed to have fun in Mm -hmm. his life Mm -hmm. and then he discovered waves and he was flipping all around he did that little like shy kid thing where he was like he would get closer and closer to us Mm -hmm. and he'd be like whoa watch out for this one this is a big one (laughs) right and um and then he would get trounced by these waves and then we let him use one of the boogie boards and i it was like you know the, the first time you see fireworks as yeah. a kid or something like yeah. that and he was flipping out and he was having the time of his life and we couldn't get him off the fucking thing even when it was getting darker and we had to leave yeah eventually we get mark's fat ass off the off the <laughs> boogie board and we go and we see, and we're like, there's no way the girls are still there on this beach. And yeah. they weren't. But what was there was a pile of the things that we had brought to the beach. <laughs> the illegal so, coolers, yeah. all of the umbrellas and chairs we were assembled. We had left just a few things for them to grab, you know. So I end up getting out of the water at some point and I'm going to hang out with the girls. And the sun is starting to come down. I untie Mike's ring from my ba- my bikini, and I put it in the the side pocket of the chair. Of the chair, yeah. And we start to clean everything up. You know, grab whatever's in the pockets out, cell phone, whatever. Completely forgot that Mike's ring is in there, and fold up the chair. Don't even realize it again until after we get back to the house. Sun has gone down. There's no way. Moon has come up. Long There's ago, somebody left with a No cup. ring. Yes. And the chairs that we brought, we left a couple chairs for you guys to bring back. And as I'm walking back, you guys already have the chairs, already starting to talk shit. And I look at you and I'm like, I don't have your ring. <laughs> and at that point, that made two, that of, made us. two, of, us. two of us. Mike laughed at me. Mike just started laughing. The boys, the other two boys are like, no. So everyone starts checking the... the Everyone's flipping out, yeah. dude. Everyone's checking the house. There are people who run across the street to start raking in the <laughs> sand. And I'm like, I'm so fucking relaxed and happy at this point. Yeah. Because I have had the perfect vacation. 
I was boogie boarding fun time fun boys usa <laughs> the entire time watching the an amazing sunset in the most beautiful place i've ever been mm-hmm. and then you lose my ring which means that i didn't lose my ring which just sends me to another level of like this is the best way this could have worked <laughs> out so everyone's flipping out you get so sad and i'm like dude a wedding ring is it's a part of like your it's a little symbol for everything that you've gone through in your your marriage and your relationship i'm like dude if it's gone it's fucking gone yeah and we'll get another one and it's just another like notch in the bedpost of our marriage and our relationship what a fun story it'd be like i lost it in the on the beach while we were having the best vacation of our lives in the most beautiful place we've ever been. So I'm not sad about it at Uh all. You're a sad girl, mopey face, and we couldn't find it. No, we couldn't. I couldn't. So everyone is looking that morning. The next morning, um, we wake up. Jack and Morgan ended up going out, and, and they ended up looking, too, at some point. But at that point, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I was like, if we don't find it, we don't find it. Yeah. So we go back to the beach that day and we have all of the stuff. And I start to kind of like look around in the area that we were in. And it's packed this it's day. It's packed. And the waves are coming up higher on the shore than we had seen them the entire week. Yeah. It was why That was the day that dirty diana Diana. did us dirty goodbye so i'm looking at these waves and i'm looking at all the new tourists and i'm like this ring is gone yeah it's buried in the sand it's deep in davy jones's locker yeah so uh so the the family that's around the area that we were in i had asked them i was like listen i was like if you guys happen to find it here's my number here's my name it's a black ring blah 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 you know whatever so they were like, yeah, totally. We'll totally look for it. And I was like, if you don't, don't worry about it. I was like, everyone's happy and healthy. And they're like, oh, no. Because everyone was like, no, you lost your ring. Yeah. You know, and I was like, it's a thing. You know, at that point, I had gotten to the point where I already cried about it. So we were done with that. And it was fine. And did that help? No, of and course not. And what's the lesson there? It doesn't matter. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Like, but of course, it's still, it's still of course, upsetting. Dude, I get you know? it. I'm just giving you a hard time. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> wait crying about it didn't bring <laughs> no it did not so um you know i i give them my number and i kind of just go about my business you know and the girls were joking around like Check oh us. we should totally look for you know uh, a metal detector and blah 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 i was like imagine like hey <laughs> looking up like metal detector rental rentals or yeah. whatever so which wouldn't have been a terrible yeah which wouldn't have been a terrible idea but so whatever we're you know all joking around all of a sudden this woman comes in comes onto the beach huge ass metal detector bucket all the things wetsuit and i was like no we hadn't seen her we had been there for like four or five days by this point had not show we had not seen anyone with a metal detector on any beach that we went to at all. No, not once. This bitch shows up the day after we lose the ring. Mm-hmm. So we go up. Zoe goes so up. So I, I give her a minute. She's like talking to some of the locals. I'm sure. Yeah. And then she's also a local. Yes. And Murph. she yeah. Uh, and she goes into the water, and I just let her kind of do her thing. And she comes up, and she's like walking past us. And I was like, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm like, I lost my husband's ring yesterday, blah, blah, blah. And she starts to like undo her fanny pack, right? Yeah. She's like, let's go over there. You got a boogie board or something? Yeah. I'll dump out my my bag. Yeah. So she was like, I didn't find anything today. She was like, but, you know, whatever. Dumps out maybe 50 rings. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, look at all the fights this lady has. Yeah. This lady has a bag of fights. So I'm like, it's none of these. There was one that could have potentially been it, but it was way small. And I was like, it's none of these. So all of the sudden a wave comes up and I literally grab the boogie board and I like cover it so that we don't lose all of her stuff that, you know, she, yeah, that she found. So 
whatever, we ended up moving our stuff back again for like the fourth time that day. And she was like, show me where around the area it was where you lost it. She's like, and I'm going to rinse off and then I'll come take a look. So I had like drew a perimeter, like with my feet and about the area that I thought it was. And she's like, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's a tungsten ring, blah, blah, blah. She's like, that's kind of heavy. She's like, it may have fallen down pretty far. She's like, but we'll check. She's like, and typically it's never in the area that you think it is. Mm -hmm. So I draw with my feet. Because of how the earth rotates. So I draw with my feet, um, like the area that I think the perimeter where it is. And um, she was like, it's not here. And I was like, if you come across it, you know, she was like, check this, uh, check this. um, She said, check this out. Craigslist, keep checking it for, you know, she was like, whatever. So, um, so I was like, all right, thank you so much, you know, for your time, whatever. And sure enough, 10 minutes goes by and she's still like, kind of like searching, like talking to people, like, yeah, Uh just like, you know, whatever, literally just outside of it. All the people in the area are invested by this point. Right. Cause now they're all like, what are you looking for? And they see you talking to her. Uh They see you draw the perimeter Uh thing. So maybe there's maybe 75 people who know that. Murph is looking for this ring. Right. So all of a sudden, Jackie's like, oh, and sh- and I look over and she pulls out. She has the fucking ring. And I was like, no fucking way. Everybody flips out. Everybody. Yeah. People on the beach. We all flip out. Like everything. We got to give you back your ring. Don't ever want to hold on to your ring ever again. Well, but- I thought I could trust you. I <laughs> made her propose to me yeah. in front of all these people. <laughs> And then I turned my back like I wasn't interested. Yeah. And then I said yes. Yeah. And then everybody clapped. Yeah. And then somebody reminded Zoya that she should tip the woman. Mm-hmm. And then she tipped the woman. Mm-hmm. And then she told you what? Uh, that she that you don't know how much this means, and that her <laughs> boyfriend has stage four cancer, and they're just trying to get him treatment. And yeah. I was just like, bah, 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 bah. yeah. And uh, it was very beautiful. And I yeah. went up and I gave her a big hug. And yeah. she goes, smiley miracle, bruh. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, most Hawaiian thing that you could have possibly said. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. And it was fucking great. Well, it was funny because I also said, you know, like, what What are the chances? You know, like, if the Maui gods needed it, the Maui gods got it. You know, yeah. like, and if they wanted to give it back, they gave it back. Yeah. So. And they didn't want it. Yeah, no, they didn't want it. They said, we it. have yeah. 74 of these. Yeah. In this lady's bag. Yep. But Morning. here's some nipples for you to see. Yeah, yeah, we we will show you titties. Yeah. Um. So we the morning, no, that night it rains. Mm-hmm. Like we were saying when we were in the pool, mm-hmm. we go to sleep. It rains. Mm-hmm. It continues to rain. The ha, I wake up early in the morning before the sun kisses the the clouds. surface of the clouds. Mm-hmm morning and i noticed that the fan has stopped and there's no clock on and the light in the bathroom is off and we come to the conclusion that we had lost power and i was like oh maybe something fell on a line or something we heard an explosion several nights Mm -hmm. earlier so something caught up with something and uh, i'm sure something just got knocked out Mm mm-hmm I go on Twitter, internet is very slow, Mm -hmm. and we come to find out that the entire island of Maui has no power. Zero. Our flight is in five hours, and we're like, what the fuck are we going to do? Right. So it's kind of a race against time at that point. What Mm -hmm. ended up happening is like we couldn't get the fucking garage Garage open. open. We couldn't get the gate open. We forced the gate open. We eventually got the garage open. Little by little, I'm checking on Twitter. I'm checking the uh, Maui uh, hashtag, uh, electrical hashtag, whatever. And they, you know, get Maui online little by little. Mm -hmm. All these people complaining and have grudges against this uh, electric company. Uh, which was very easy to get. It was very interesting to see local politics at work. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, eventually I see that there's power back at the airport. Mm-hmm. Our flight gets delayed a little bit, mm-hmm. but not much. We go out for lunch. Mm-hmm. We went to this other very touristy part mm-hmm. of Hawaii. It was 
too hot and mm-hmm. I was sweating inside of my pants into my pants. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually we get to the airport. We get on our flight. We have what feels like the longest flight imaginable. Zoya is asleep on me, which causes me to not be asleep at all. Um, and we land. We're back in L.A. for the first couple days. Relax. Yeah, chill. Here we are. We're back and we're relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then little by little, you get back to work. And being frustrated, being a little bit frustrated came back sooner than I wanted wanted it. Mm -hmm. And I know the same for you. You went back to work. You immediately had a migraine and you were overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it made me sad because we were so... um, It was the perfect vacation, and I was like, you know, you know, when you don't get stoned for a while, and then you get stoned, and then you're like, man, I I'm so happy I have nothing to do, Mm -hmm. and it's just I'm nice. Or if you do like yoga, the feeling right after like you're done with yoga Mm -hmm. or meditating, that's I was just at peace, Mm -hmm. and then uh, you get back to all the things that you have to do to to keep living yeah and it comes back yeah but uh i i i would like to think that we carry a little bit more of the islands with us yeah as we progress through our lives Mm -hmm. and uh it's a good reminder to get out of here every now and again yeah and also um um just try to find that relaxation wherever you can because it's so important you fucking you got to stay balanced yeah um I would say it's not all bad here because no. I did have an unbelievable weekend as far as stand up goes. Yeah. Um, I came back to like a week full of shows. I was at Third Wheel with my friends. I um, was at the improv a couple times. I hosted a main room show that was unbelievable. Um, the lineup on there was unbelievable. They called me to do a, a cold open the next night. I got to showcase at the comedy store for the the booker there on Saturday. Um, on Saturday, I went and I did the showcase, and then I did a cold open at the improv, and then I came back to the comedy store to do New Joke Night with J.F. Harris, and I did great on, on both sets. It, it felt really nice. Mm-hmm. And um, just hanging out with friends who I hadn't seen in a couple weeks. And I felt very on all weekend. Now I'm a little exhausted. Mm-hmm. It's Monday. I've got to get back to making stuff. Yeah. I have Surrounded shows to promote. You have to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Surrounded show, by the way, is this Friday, 7 and 9.45, early and late show. Back to doing two. Mm-hmm. Um. So the train is moving once again. This yeah. life keeps chugga churning. And I hope Diane is still alive. And um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's I'm, why. Yeah. That's it. I mean, we had a blast. Mahalo. I was very thankful for time off and time away. Um, I was also very mahalo for time off. Yeah. Um, I think that everything happens for a reason. And uh surrounded is this friday and then again in new york on the 27th 27th in connecticut on the 25th and um on the 25th 25th no yeah no yes no Mm. if that's a saturday jackie's getting married that day it's the sunday the 26th 26th i said man i do that a lot i have to stop i have too much in my head at all times Mm -hmm. and i have to stop being like i know when this stuff is Mm -hmm. I have always had like a very patchy, I I like no stuff for certain. Mm-hmm. And then something adjacent to that. And I'm like, why would you memorize that and not that? Yeah. They're like they're right next to each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't. So, so yeah, Mike's got a lot of things going on coming up. And if you're on the East Coast, come check it out. Um, if not. MikeFalzone.com for tickets. If mm-hmm. not, you're dead to us. Mm. Um. Thank you for being here, Zoya. Thank you for the having house that me you here. Pay rent for with. Speaking of which, I'm gonna need some rent money. Mm, and we'll see. We'll talk about it, and it'll <laughs> it'll be a conversation. And that's another great part of being married is that nothing is expected. <laughs> 
That's all right. I uh, while we were away, I took Mike's phone and I told him that I needed money, and I just opened up his <laughs> his checking account with his face ID, and it worked. And I didn't like that. It was very funny. The face ID should be able to see if you're saying no. Yeah. Well. Um, anyway, Consent is important with the face ID. I you just should wanted... know if it's being held. They should have a fingerprint sensor on the back. No. And so That's they should know much. if it's then your you don't have a, hand. Then you don't have a case safety. Somebody's going to catch a case pretty soon if they keep taking money out of my account. I've taken zero money out of your account. No, I know. Super snap. You guys, thank you so much for listening. As you know, patreon.com is a virtual tipping and rewards website where you give us a little bit of your hard-earned cash and you get a shout-out for a $10 group. And that goes a little something like this. Uh, Matthew Carey, Shannon, DLD, Patrick Simpson, Ernesto, Raja, Elizeus, Joe Turzin, Louis and Odette, uh, Lauren Chauncey, sure. Paul Gilliam, Steve Deergo, Chris McCarthy, Trevor the Wearfishy, Joe Pens, Happy Birthday Starlight, JJ McToots, Rachel Last Name, Mike Genie, Alan Garcia, Connie Tryon, Isabella Sparkles, and Taro Baez, Frankie Matos Music. In our short years, we come long way. Uh, Chris Fern- uh, Fernandez. Jo- Johnny Rosito, Handcrafted Nickwear, CCPB and J, Admam, Ch- uh, Emily Paget, Giant Tom Hanks, Emily, uh, Emily, uh, Lizzie Love, uh, Gavin Welsh, Crossed Up, Someone Tell Aaron, Emily Buck, Jackie Hammond, Paige Junzen, Guy with Long Hair, Chris Johnson, Happy Birthday Chris, Anna Valles, Benjamin Putz, Beth Bush, Smeg- Snuggle Pig H, Ryan Ashbrook, Christina Camille, Josh Jinston, Michael Johnson, Kayla Johnston, Jules Run, Grant Levisior, Chad Clark, Joe Finney, Heather Ashley, What is Cat, Katie Taylor, Shane Welsh, uh, Evan Canoe, Joe Ban, Milky Beans, Jess Enright, Lillian Carrillo, Magnus Silva, Barrington Lloyd Lovett, Ben Fuchs, Theodorus Carambellis, One Bum Man, Janisha Tutton, Jacob D. Bradford, Justine Bibistein, uh, Josh, Josh, <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Sparty, Ed Birch, uh, Ella, Helen Ford, Illuminos, Superfloss, Tatiana, Clay, Danielle De Verona, John Robinson, Sean Stone, Valerie York, Dev, Jesse Still Stillwell, uh, Katie Lee G, Rob Devereux, nope, here we go. Uh, Don Go Chase in Waterfalls, Nestor De Leon the Third, Luis Hernandez, Alexander Legowski, Monique Quistorf, Jamie Garner, Troy R, Cody Ostolas. Felicia Shimberry and Matthew J. Palka. You guys, thank you so much for listening. We love you. It's good to be back and we'll see you next week. See you next week.